Welcome back to the TI Evolution series. If you're new, my name is Edward. I'll be your host. Previously, we talked about T during the Tang and Song dynasties. I hope you enjoy learning each dynasty, its culture, and how these affected the T evolution. As you may remember, the way involved was due to many factors working together in concert, including the improvement of tea producing methods and the movement of tea production regions. In this video, I'll continue to describe China's next two dynasties, their cultures, and how this affected the tea evolution. Now let's begin. Tea in the Yuan and Ming dynasties. The third of the Great Five Dynasty is the Yuan Dynasty. During the previous dynasty, Song's prosperous economy and ineffective military attracted this nomadic culture from the north. Kublai Khan conquered China and made it part of the Mongol Empire. In Chinese history, this period is called the Yuan Dynasty. During the Yuan Dynasty, Chinese people weren't as wealthy as in Song Dynasty. However, the culture not only survived, but was reinvigorated. The Mongol Empire was enormous. This unification enhanced the communication between different ethnic minorities, thus strengthening the national integration process. In the Yuan dynasty, Islam and Tibetan Buddhism were respected, which resulted in their religious patterns being introduced to Chinese art. Many art pieces during the Yuan dynasty were even practical, sometimes with a persuasive story. Here's an example, a painting of Kublai Khan hunting. What would tea look like in this period? Loose leaf tea started as a rarity in the previous Song dynasty, but the quantity of loose leaf tea gradually increased and exceeded the compressed tea in the Yuan dynasty. By the compressed tea, I mean the dragon phoenix style, we mentioned in the previous video. Uh, check it out if you missed it. Tea in the Tang and Song dynasties. Other than the quantity, there wasn't much significant change in tea because tea or art was not important in people's lives then. Here are some other developments in the tea-related industry during the Yuan dynasty. Uh, people began to explore mass-producing tea with simple machines. But more importantly, the Mongol Empire introduced drawing on white porcelain with cobalt from the Middle East to China. This blue and white style would later become known as one of the most famous Chinese porcelain style. The next and the second last dynasty is the Ming Dynasty, which is one of the most peaceful and stable times in the Chinese history. Ming was a Chinese local regime which fought and won China back from the Mongol Empire. People in the Ming Dynasty blamed the Song Dynasty's free trade policy for attracting the attention from the outside world. People thought the free trade policy was the reason for losing Chinese territory to the Mongols. This facilitates Ming's foreign policy, which closed China off from the rest of the world. In the Ming Dynasty, Islam and Buddhism integrated with Chinese culture and became distinct to China. At the same time, Ming's style of art became decorative and emotional. Quite a similar art revolution was happening at almost the same time in Europe. It was Renaissance. Do you think it's a coincidence? In my opinion, when religious or spiritual art get emotional, it becomes influential with no boundaries. One exception to the Ming foreign policy is from a greater power the emperor. Zheng He, one of the eunuchs of the fifth Ming emperor, led seven maritime expeditions to the Pacific and Indian Oceans from 1405 to 1433. During Zheng He's voyage, Chinese goods, including art pieces, were given as gifts to the foreign countries, which gave the world an impression of the finest Chinese culture. That's why today Ming style is more recognized as the Chinese style, while the more uh, abstract or humble Song style is not as significant or symbolic. Song era pieces 
could even be mistaken as art from other cultures. A theory I made up to explain this is that not many foreigners in the Sun Dynasty、uh, could afford fine art pieces because of fair trade. How can you trade with a much wealthier country that took 80% of the world's GDP fairly? However, in this period, by accepting Ming as a sovereign state, any country or people could receive numerous diplomatic gifts from the emperor. Zheng He's job was to promote the emperor and China. So instead of trading, acknowledging the empire was a much better deal. Ming's imperial power was stronger than any dynasty before. One word from the emperor could become the law forever. While this could harm the country, it caused the tea industry to boom. Twenty-one years after Zhu Yuanzhang founded the Ming Dynasty, he said, "Fei Tuan Cha." Xing Ye Cha, which means compressed tea should be discarded and loose leaf tea should be encouraged. When he was young, Zhu Yuanzhang himself was very poor. Like the homeless, he knew this order will lead to less work in producing tea. This six-character order launched a brand new tea era. Since then, tribute tea would only accept when it was loose leaf tea. Pan frying, which was a higher temperature processing method. Gradually replaced steaming. Personally, I credit this to the development and mass use of a piece of cookware, which modern Chinese kitchen are known for: the wok. This new processing method, pan frying in a wok, resulted in a richer taste than steaming did. It also made loose leaf tea into various shapes with ever-changing aroma. No wonder it became popular quickly. Chinese people stopped eating tea leaves. Possibly because they felt the leaves were too beautiful to eat, or possibly because、uh, the flavor was too concentrated after processing in the wok. Anyways, instead of consuming the whisked or the boiled tea soup, they found drinking tea or drinking the liqueur of leaves brewed in water delivered a more intense aroma and a smoother taste. The use of a wok in producing tea made it so that. Neither、uh, compressing nor grinding was necessary. This change from consuming to brewing in the Ming Dynasty laid the foundation for modern tea. A new style of teaware gradually emerged into people's tea life, including gai wan,、uh, teapot, and tasting cups that we drink tea with. The appreciation involved to the criteria we still use today, that is, reviewing tea by the aroma, the taste. The pure color and the appearance of a tea leaf. The brewing concept seems simple. However, it took thousands of years to discover. With refined tea processing techniques and people's desire for more tea variety in the relatively stable Ming Dynasty, Chinese people tried to work with leaves of different maturity and multiple seasons. As they were exploring various processing methods, bigger yields and more styles were created. In addition to green tea, dark tea, scented tea, oolong tea, and black tea were all explored. After thousands of years of tea evolution, the Ming Dynasty contributed more tea styles than any other time before or after. To review this video, today we talked about two dynasties, Yuan and Ming. If they have to share one thing in common, in my opinion, that's the development of loose leaf tea. During the Yuan Dynasty, the first stage, people made a lot of loose leaf tea. In the Ming Dynasty, people explored major loose leaf tea styles, and brewing tea became popular. In the next video, which is the last one in the Tea Evolution series, I'll continue to talk about tea in the Qing Dynasty, which is the last imperial dynasty in Chinese history. Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoy watching this one and learn something today. If so, please remember to give me a thumbs up. And share it with your Thursday tea friends because tea is meant to be shared. Stay safe, stay tuned. I'll see you guys next time.